the lady from Ramsey, Representative Moran. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Oh, gosh, there's been a, a lot of statements that have uh, come across uh, the House floor. But my name is Rena Moran, and I am a great, great granddaughter of a slave. A slave who was put into servitude in this country, who probably at one time conformed, protest, and died a slave. And so I, I, I mention that because, you know, I, I hear the statements that people are making about you breaking the law, you know. <clears throat> but we know laws were not always created fair and just. And we also know that laws does not always represent everyone in the same way. It didn't then, and it doesn't today. And so I remember when I was back out, back in the community, I had come to Minnesota and building relationships and making connections, and found myself living in the Rondo community, a community that was, you know, displaced by the I-94, you know, that decided that that was the proper place to put a highway and separate the black community and dismantle the economic bread of that community. Because even in the late 50s and 60s, they were separate and not equal. And so I remember, as we talk here, about how I began, you know, I became a fan of what I was hearing from the Rondo community. And at one point, I thought to myself, when I came here in 2000, 2002 and 3, my thought was, wow, you know, why are people still angry and mad about something that happened when? And I would ask, when did that happen? And they would share with me that it happened back in the late 50s and the 60s. And my initial thought was, well, why are they still so angry, right? And we, we know that the past dictates the present. But what I also found out is that it wasn't so much about them still being angry. What I became to realize is that it was a community of people who was the ancestors of uncles and grandparents who had been displaced, saying that I would no longer allow something to happen to my community without being involved in what's going on in my community. Because that's what happened. They came in and, and had imminent domain and took homes, gave them $5,000, and so you got 30 days to move out. And what I came to realize that this was a community of people here in the 21st century who were saying that I'm going to fight. I'm going to be a, a part of the decision-making process in my community. And no longer would I let things happen to me without being a part of making that decision about what that looks like, not just for myself, but for my kids, my grandkids, and my great-grandkids. That is what I was hearing. And as a person organizing myself back in my community um, about decisions, you know, some of those things were some of the things we talk about now, the light rail, housing, and other issues that was impacting, you know, a community like mine. And I remember organizing around those issues, and I would go to sometimes the city council, the mayor, come down here and try to educate people about the issues that are impacting myself and my community. And what I, what, what, what I will realize, especially in my community, locally, people will say, Rena, I agree with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly. But the law, but the law is the law. And what I came to understand and learn as my ancestors became to learn is that laws are not always fair and just. And so when I had an opportunity to run for office or see myself five years from that moment, I wanted to be a legislator. 
And I wanted to be a legislator because I wanted to be a part of creating laws and policies that create the practices that happen back in our community that would be fair, that would be just, that would be about all of us. Because they're not always that way. And that is kind of like what I see about this bill here. That is like, you know, I don't care how we sugarcoat it and how we, you know, dress it up. It is about Black Lives Matters on the highway. It is about a community of people raising their voices up about an injustice that they felt, that they feel that we still feel today. It is about an injustice that a community of people feel. That is what it is about. And unfortunate is back then when Martin Luther King was marching, that he made people uncomfortable. He, you know, broke some laws that was created back then. He um, sure probably got on some people's nerves. I'm sure there was many people who said that this is not right and you're breaking the law. How dare you? That happened then because laws and policies that create practices are not always fair and just and equal for all of us, even today. That we are not all in a place where we're all treated the same. You know, and maybe back in your district in the rural community, you don't realize that because I know in some of your rural communities, there is no diversity, which is what I was told by some. Everyone looks just like you. So you are able to see and feel the injustice. But as a black woman, a child of, of a slave, I'm here to tell you, injustices are real. And we feel them. My children feel them. My sons feel it. And so, you know, as I was looking at um, um, Becker's friend, this here march here on the, the Pettus Bridge. That's a powerful visual. And I wonder how many people was trying to get to the hospital? How many people was trying to get to their friend's home? Or how many people was inconvenienced on this day that they marched for justice and brought the darkness and the ugliness to light? I'm sure there was many, you know. And, you know, I didn't march on the highway or go to the airport. And I know there were some people who felt inconvenienced. But I think just as Martin Luther King in his days who felt like unless we are inconveniencing someone else, they don't see you. They don't hear you. And the laws and the practices continue to be as they are. And I just wish we, can, we could, you know, spend some time looking at the injustices that are happening to real people in real people's lives. This is what this is about. We talk about public safety. You know, I don't sit on a public safety committee, but I did hear that not one police officer or county attorney or no one else came to testify and said that this is what they want. Because you know what? People want to believe that those protesters went out into the highway and, uh, and was putting the other people's lives in danger, or maybe their, their, their own lives in danger. And I don't believe that any one person will step onto the highway and commit suicide. They're smarter than that. They get cars, 
to slow down the traffic, you know. And most importantly is that they believed in the police. They believed in the police to do the work that they're called to do, to keep people safe. And the police showed up and they did that. They stopped the traffic. They did what they are called to do. And they knew that. So it's hard for me to believe my colleagues on the other side when you say this is really is about public safety. And it's hard for me to believe that because you had a fireworks bill <laughs> that came through that committee. And the police showed up. Many other people showed up in opposition and said, this is about public safety. And you ignored it all. You ignored it. But you want me to believe that this bill that about protests is about public safety when not one police officer testified on behalf of it. I know there's a lot I don't understand, but I do not understand that. So I have here, and I, I, and I know that, you know, this is a, a Republican bill, right? That maybe an Alex bill that's moving across the country because we know that there are 18 other states right now who are introduced or voted on legislation to curb mass protests. 18 states around the country is moving these same types of bills. Is it about public safety? Is it about really inconvenience you and allowing people voices to be heard in a way that they can be validated? So I want to read this little paragraph here from Representative Dean, a um, piece that he uh, sent out. And this is from uh, the letter from Birmingham. Um, and it's uh, in the last paragraph within that, Dr. King says, so we had no alternative except that of preparing for direct action whereby we will present our very bodies as a mean of laying our case before the conscience of the local and national community. And he meant literally, because they were beat. He literally meant that. And so when you have a group of people who fathers and sons and brothers have had encounters where they feel injustice, sis, that has happened to them, that the trauma that comes from that, the toxic stress that comes from that, the little girl and the little boy who has to go to school and, and pretend as if nothing has happened to her father, her uncle, her brother, and life goes on as if nothing has happened, that is an injustice for a group of people who wants to be validated. They are real people. They are uncles, dads, brothers. And so I stand and want to thank Representative Becker Finn for bringing this amendment forward because According to Representative Zerwatz, you know, I, I met with him and Representative Lomer early in the process when they dropped these bills because I wanted to try to better understand them, you know, uh, and we can be hypothetical and we can talk about what could have happened, what little person could have been on the highway and what, you know, all the happy hypotheticals. And, you know, um, I, I heard Zerwatz, his story changed a little bit with the deaf you know, that he didn't share with me, but I, I understand people are inconvenienced, but that happens every single day in the life of a person that looks like me. Every single day. 
some type of way. If it's not me, it is someone in my family, a child, a neighbor. We are inconvenienced. We are inconvenienced. We can never come to our, with our whole self. And so, you know, um, the stories are sad, but I, can, I have lots of sad stories to share with you about a people being inconvenienced and having to start all over or have done everything right and it did not matter. And it did not matter. And often enough, it's because something as simple as the color of our skin. So that's where we are in the 21st century. And this protest bill is one of those 21st century bills that is intentionally targeting a group of people. In the 21st century. Public safety is not making sure that that um, fireworks bill doesn't get passed into law. That's public safety. So I hope we do some work on that behalf. So um, I support, again, I support this amendment. Um, I believe in this time and this day when injustices are real and it's our constitutional right, this does nothing but try to penalize a group of people who knows already that we understand the bill, that it is against the law. This, you get, it is a penalty for getting on the highway, you know, for being at the airport. You know, it would have been hundreds of people being arrested, right, when Trump signed his executive order across this country, right here in, Saint, right here in Minnesota, because it was an injustice that was disproportionately impacting a group of people. And so, I believe this is one of those bills that should not be going through this body to particularly shut down a group of people. Because when injustices are happening, people are willing to go to jail. Right, Representative Lomer? Right? You are willing to go to jail for injustices. So my hope is that we can take a deeper look at, at, at what you're trying to do here and what you're doing here. And if at all possible, put yourself in the face of others. Put yourself in their shoes and see the injustice that is in this bill. Thank you. The gentleman from